Hi everyone, and welcome back to Think Science. If it's your first time on our channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button and like this video. Today, we're going to be talking about the laws of thermodynamics and how they apply to biology. We covered enzymes and metabolism in our previous video, so check that out as well. Let's get started. First, we have our question of the day. How many total laws of thermodynamics are there? Leave your answers in the comments below. So for the purposes of biology in this channel, we're going to be talking about the first and second laws of thermodynamics, but there are more. These laws are important to understand how the metabolism of organisms work and how cellular processes allow organisms to stay alive. It is also important when dealing with ecology and learning about how energy affects populations of organisms and ecosystems. The first law of thermodynamics states that the total energy of an isolated system is constant. Energy can be transformed from one form to another, but cannot be created or destroyed. Chances are you have heard this phrase before, that energy can't be created or destroyed. This law means exactly what it says. We also call this law the law of conservation of energy, because the amount of energy does not change, only the form of the energy does. The term isolated system refers to a system where external energy cannot enter and internal energy cannot leave from the system. The second law of thermodynamics may be one that you have not heard of before. The second law states that every energy transfer or transformation increases the entropy of the universe. So what does entropy mean? Entropy can be thought of as disorder or randomness. So the second law states that whenever an energy transfer or transformation happens, the disorder of the universe increases. This is the natural tendency of the universe to increase disorder. It doesn't like to increase order. But life and organisms need order so that we can carry out our me metabolic processes and survive. We need it for growth, reproduction, and maintenance of our cells and bodies. We are open systems, not isolated, and require the flow of energy inside of us from the universe so that we could carry out our biological processes. So, organisms are like islands of order in a sea of the disorder of the universe. To maintain our order, I, our biological processes need to make sure we are gaining more energy than we're either using for our processes or energy that we're losing. Remember, we're open systems, so we can gain or lose energy since we're not isolated. But if we lose or use up more energy than the energy we're gaining, we end up dying since our biological systems have no longer maintained the order necessary for survival. The type of energy that flows into our bodies needs to be free energy, which is the energy that we use to do work. There is a special equation dealing with free energy that we will cover in our future videos, called Gibbs free energy. This equation and value tells us whether different processes are energetically unfavorable, i.e. create order, which is against the disorder of the universe, or are, if they are energetically favorable and increase the entropy or disorder of the universe. Energetically unfavorable reactions are also known as endothermic reactions, and energetically favorable ones as exothermic. This is because in endothermic reactions, heat, which is a form of energy, is flowing in at a faster rate than it's flowing out of the reaction. But in exothermic reactions, more heat energy is being released than gained, which increases entropy of the universe. We will talk about how the equation can predict the thermodynamics of a reaction in this way next time. So stay tuned for the upcoming videos and make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more biology content. As always, thank you for watching. Thanks, science.